Hello and welcome back into the studio. For those of you who are new here, I'm Janice, a painter, an advocate of keeping sketchbooks, and a former graphic designer. I'd love to share with you what I've been focusing on lately, and that is the development of the mark. When we think of a mark, it's an uh, identifier for our personal work, and it's descriptive, it's emotional, it's um, the language that we want to translate our information, how we see, onto the plane of the surface. So um, if we start with sketching, um, Paul Klee once said, I'm taking a line for a walk. And what he meant is that um, everyone's language, their personality, how they describe, how they see and translate information is different. But I'd like to share some information that um, masterful works um, have informed me and advanced my skills and something that I'm focusing on now so that I can learn from those, incorporate that new language into my work and then build upon my skill level. Um, so with that, I'd like to share some examples of um, these works which are in the sketchbooks of um, masters. And they've all kept sketchbooks um, that they might have used just for um, the purpose of sketching or later have gone back to incorporate sketches into their paintings. This work is by Rembrandt, and it has um, very traditional sensibility about it. He's using ink, and he's developing um, light and shadow by going back into that with overlay of the ink. He might have used some sort of pen, not necessarily a bamboo, but um, there are a multitude of pens available if you want to use uh, different types of ink. This is by Fragonard. It's very um, ethereal. It's very uh, soft and elegant. Cezanne, who used uh, pencil here, he's overlaid this uh, use of pencil to create shadow. Manet, who's um, used uh, this ink to describe this woman. He's also, you know, writes in his sketchbooks. Van Gogh, who is using ink here, and there's a lot of repetition of different forms and descriptive uh, sort of nuancing between how he wants to describe the landscape between the earth and the trees. We've got Richard Diebenkorn, who was a master at composition, uh, very much inspired by Matisse, um, the simple elegance of line and how the form fills the four planes, uh, I'm sorry, the four corners um, within this picture plane. We have Leon Kossoff, who uses very um, energetic, sort of all over picture plane. It's very frenetic, it's, it's moving, and we get um, a sensibility about how he builds up the surface by working overall to um, define different planes. So we have a lot of depth by going and repeating over charcoal and working the whole um, four corners again um, in a very deliberate manner. And then we have um, Frank Auerbach, who very um, energetic, sort of nervous tension here. Um, and he's creating these lines, probably just moving, getting his hand adjusted, figuring out where he wants to put this head. He's gone back and erased some of these marks that he's made, maybe smudged and gone over and repeated 
until he gets the form and the essence of the person he wants to describe. So those are just a few examples of some masters who have worked with, with very simple um, charcoal, um, Conte crayons, um, we have graphite that you can insert in water. It works like a watercolor type of um, pen, pencil. Um, different types of pencils, um, pens for ink. Of course, there are different types of um, inks. This one's walnut. We have traditional uh, black India ink. And um, just to further this uh, discussion, you can go into um, works by specific artists that you enjoy and see what it is that you can uh, learn from how they uh, worked on composition, color, line, form, uh, geometry, whatever it might be here. I've taken Bonard and I've translated that in my own way with ink. And this is like really quick, less than five minutes I can do these exercises. I can see what the takeaway for me is. Um, something that I personally learned, I was working on a figure, I took an image of that figure, and then I tried to transcribe that into my book. But I found that the loss of information from working from a flattened image of a figure did not allow me to even retrieve the same amount of information that I could get from a um, masterful work. So um, we can, of course, work from the model direct. Again, this is just pencil. This is really quick, maybe 10 minutes. I can describe the form um, how I want it within this uh, picture plane. I wanted here to incorporate the whole figure. I could have cropped it and just done a vertical, included the head. I could have made this figure really small. So it depends um, what I'm going after. Another example is working with this ink. And I've described uh, the figure, um, the essence of the figure, not all the nuances. And by overlaying the inks, I can create, again, um, more saturated color. So in a small amount of time, in 10 minutes, I can sort of do what I want to do, build upon my skills and really learn and translate this now at a later time. If I want to use a figure into a painting, into whatever it might be, I've got sort of my data and I can use my figures described in my way um, onto other mediums. And um, again, what I can say is that everyone's personality, their point of reference, where they're starting and where they want to go with this information is so different. So it's all, um, you know, a broad mix. It depends on your personality, how you describe and define your language of um, art. Um, you know, it's so, there's no limit. It's all open for interpretation and um, however you choose to describe um, your visual language is up to you. So hope this brought some value into your studio practice. And if it did, thumbs up, subscribe, and until next time, I will see you in the studio soon.